What's up guys, Beyond? I'm back with another video. And we've got ourselves another NASCAR race reaction. Obviously with the Cup Series of Watkins Glen today. And man, what a race that was. That race went green pretty much the majority of the time. The only caution we had were the competition caution and the stage cautions. That was it. The race ended up going 2 hours and 11 minutes. I think part of that had to do with the fact that... Um, I think part of that had to do with the fact that the IndyCar race at Nashville was all was scheduled for 5.30 Eastern on the same channel that the Cup race was on, which was scheduled at 3 Eastern, and they got it started exactly at 3. So, I mean, that was a little bit of a clusterfuck when you think about it, but they got it done. So, here we are, race reaction. Let's get on with it, shall we? So, prior to the race, uh, Chase Elliott would have to start at the rear due to inspection failures. And then came out that Elliott's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, got ejected and his team was docked 10 points for an L1 penalty. The issue being with a rear window air deflector. The same penalty would be assessed to Christopher Bell and his crew chief, Adam Stevens, would also be ejected um, today as well. So they had to get somebody else to crew chief. Um, and per Chris Knight, as confirmed to uh, Jim Utter, NASCAR would confiscate parts from Chase Elliott's car earlier today so we get the race going ryan newman or ryan newman will be the first one to spin but of course you know he gets going again and on lap 10 right before the competition caution and this would be a theme for him brad kozlowski your pole sitter and leader at the time spins in turn five does a full 360 and gets going again and then the competition comes out caution comes out after the new leader crosses the line and kozlowski would lead part of the field down pit road Race gets going again. Anthony Alfredo would pit for service, uh, likely to go to lap down. Joey Logano apparently reported that he had radio issues. Uh, several drivers would pit with three to go in stage one. Keselowski would end up drifting it through turn one, for the most part. And Logano would end up taking the stage one victory. Kyle Larson second, Danny Hamlin third, Tyler Reddick fourth, William Byron fifth, Kyle Busch sixth, Alex Bowman seventh, Chase Elliott eighth, Austin Dillon ninth, and Eric Jones in tenth. Excuse me. James Davison would end up getting a speeding penalty. Actually, let me correct myself. There was one incident caution, um, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, but some Josh, uh, Kurt Busch and Josh Balicki would both take no tires, and Busch would win in the race off pit road while Balicki would come off seventh, although they wouldn't be up near the front because of all the guys that stayed out prior, or, you know, that stayed out because of the fact that they had pitted previously. Um, the caution would come out for the 51 of Davison, uh, slow on the racetrack. Ryan Blaney would spin somewhere else as well. Uh, Davison, believing that he had an electrical issue, uh, he would be in and out of the garage for the majority of the day. Um, some drivers would pit here, uh, and then we get going again, and then Bell and Briscoe had a little bit of contact. Briscoe coming back onto the racetrack, and Briscoe was told that he had some right front damage as a result of it. Um, Chase Elliott would have to pit after locking up in one of the corners and flat spotting his tires. Um, a few a few drivers would pit with about three or four laps to go in stage two, and Martin Truex Jr. would take the stage two victory. Christopher Bell second, Kevin Harvick third, Kyle Larson fourth, Chase Briscoe fifth, Ross Chastain sixth, Matty Benedetto seventh, Denny Hamlin eighth, Joey Logano ninth, and Kyle Busch tenth. Davison went in, had would have come back out and then ended up going back to the garage. Some drivers pit, others stay out, obviously. Eric Jones and Cole Custer would both get a penalty for going through too many pit boxes. And then we get going again. Ow. Sore arm. Um, Eric Jones would spin at one point. Racer would, would remain green, though. Uh, Christopher Bell would spin in turn one. Uh, Larson locked it up and got into him. And as they were in a fierce battle for second, trying to follow behind Martrix Jr., who was leading. Um, and then it was around this time where we started seeing people pit starting with Chastain and Harvick, um, to get their final stops in. Kozlowski would spin into turn one, and he ended up getting into his teammate, Joey Logano, who spun as well. Um, more drivers would pit the next lap. Larson and Truex would pit from up front a couple laps later, or about a lap or so later, uh, with Denny Hamlin assuming the lead. And this is where the race was won. Larson beat Martin Truex Jr. off of pit road. Davison would come back on the racetrack. Elliott would pit lap 61. Josh Balicki uh, suffered a speeding penalty. Then Hamlin would pit from the lead. Suarez would be slow on pit road, and they would have to replace a battery. 
um, and his car would come back to life. Ryan Priest would report a vibration and then have to pit with said vibration. Davison would be out at lap 73 with an electrical issue. Brad Kozlowski spins again and then pits for like the third or fourth time today that he, you know, spun. And pretty much, and then the rest of the way, it was just watching Chase Elliott run down, you know, everybody that was in front of him, which is pretty much what it was all day. And Elliott, he tried, but unfortunately he would not catch teammate Kyle Larson, uh, who ended up, who had to deal with some lap traffic in the final couple of laps. Um, but Larson would get the job done and pick up his fifth victory of the season with Elliott coming up second. Um, so obviously he had the ten, docking, getting docked the 10 points, but he ends up with a second place finish anyway. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but the fact, I mean, the fact that that happened, like Elliot probably could have won today when you think about it, but it's just, I, I think the penalty and or having to start at the rear, you know, obviously he can run his way up to the front, but having to start at the rear doesn't really help matters. And I think that was part of it. Um, but Elliot said post-race that, you know, he made some mistakes and um, it just, it is what it is. And in terms of overall points, as we head into the Indianapolis Road Course next weekend, Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin are tied with Larson having the lead by virtue of wins. So now Larson finally has the overall points lead, which means Hamlin is currently not in the spot to be in to be regular season champion. And with three races left and three playoff spots left, because, of course, Larson is a repeat winner, at this point in time, yeah. If I'm Denny Hamlin right now, I'm I'm seriously looking at this like, okay, I got to win either the Indy Road Course or Michigan. Because if we get new winners at both of those racetracks and Hamlin goes into Daytona without a win... Put it to you this way, you know, we saw William Byron win his first race in the Cup Series last year at Daytona in the regular season finale. If I'm Denny Hamlin right now, I'm not, I, you cannot bank on making it in at Daytona. Put it to you that way. Now, if we get a repeat winner, either at in, the Indy Road Course or Michigan, then Hamlin is pretty much safe. Uh, so that, so really for Hamlin, either he needs to win or... Or he need or he needs a repeat winner in either of the next two races before we get to Daytona, because if we get a new winner at both of those races, then set then Hamlin's the one that could get screwed over at Daytona. So hey, we'll see what happens. But that's just been the story of the season, and now this this also puts a bit more pressure on Kevin Harvick. Because now he, because really he needs to win or he could get screwed out of making the playoffs. So, yeah. Um, but Chase Briscoe picked up a top 10 uh, today and that's awesome because we're going into the Indy Road Course, like I said, and he has experience over there because he ran the Xfinity race there last year. I don't know how many guys are going to be in the field that ran it last year. When in uh, when the Xfinity Series ran it for the first time, obviously Briscoe being one, but if you ran the Xfinity race last year, you're gonna have more exper that year's worth of experience over basically the rest of the field. I know it doesn't technically matter considering that this is the Cup Series and not the Xfinity Series, and things are different, but still, having that track time from last year is going to help some of these guys because they're going to know it better than everybody else. So I think we'll just have to see what happens there. Honestly, I feel like we might get a new winner just because of that or Chase Elliott's going to go out and win it or somebody like that. Um, Michigan, not really sure who I think will win that, but honestly, I, I think the chance of a new winner probably is not as high at Michigan as it is at the Indy Road Course. And then, like I said, Daytona is the ultimate wild card. So with all of that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Obviously, make sure to use code ANJJ for free shipping on orders of $20 or more at Circle Diecast. Also, make sure to use the uh, Seal Vendor Random Fantasy link in the description below. If you have Twitter, make your fantasy picks or random fantasy picks, I should say. 
and also stay tuned because I will have another video out tomorrow morning and uh, that's going to be a pretty special one. So yeah, so I'll see y'all next time. Peace.